All right, Duelists, welcome back to Team APS Plus, and you guys all know exactly why we're here today. YCS Pasadena was just this past weekend. It was the first major Yu-Gi-Oh! event since the release of Magnificent Mavens, and this was a very long-awaited set for some pretty obvious reasons. It introduced the Ishizu cards into the game, and these were some highly anticipated, and maybe feared, cards that were supposed to help the already very strong Tournaments deck become the Tier 0 deck that everybody has been fearing. So, did it actually happen? Well, the answer is yes, without a doubt. This deck is extremely dominant, and the results so far suggest that it is definitely a Tier 0 deck. Now, whether or not that continues remains to be seen, but I wanted to hop into some of the coverage of the event, share some thoughts of mine, some takes. Um, the sort of, I guess, abridged answer to all of this is that I think that this deck probably is going to get hit sooner rather than later. Not necessarily for the reason you might think, although it has kind of been already a topic of conversation. All right, let's just hop into, into everything. So, first of all, I want to say congratulations to the winner. Um, this was Hani Jawari. He piloted his Shizu Terrellman's deck with precision and aggression to come out on top, beating 1,805 other duelists to become YCS Pasadena champion. So he was uh, playing up against Jesse Cotton in the finals. I caught some of the parts of it on stream, and it looked really intense. It looked like a lot of fun. Uh, both players certainly were, you know, making a lot of decisions, and there was a fair amount of interaction going on. And a lot of people online seem to agree that that was a thing. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more back into that in a second, but yeah. As for the representation of the Tier Elements deck, this is the Top 32 Breakdown. In a pie chart. So Tournaments took 81% of the top spots. That's 26 different Ishizu Tournaments decks. Three Sprite decks. One was Pure 2 or Bestial. And three Fluanderies decks. In all of Top 32. Now typically the cutoff point that most people sort of share regarding um, when a deck is Tier 0 is like 65% or about two-thirds of representation all going to one deck. Well, clearly it, that's not missing here. The Ishizu Tournaments deck definitely took the top spots, and only two other decks were really able to make a dent, so that's telling. Um, also, you might have seen this picture going around on the internet. So, uh, yeah, this was a feature match between Pac, uh, shoutouts to him, and Hani, who ended up winning the event. This was an Ashizu Tier Elements ditto, and it's chaos, right? Like, this is just kind of a nightmare. There are cards everywhere that are, you know, that have been milled, cards that are already in the grave, there are cards that are banished, there's monsters in the field that you would be hard-pressed to make out the difference, players have cards in hand, players have, cards are everywhere, and it's really pretty insane. This is not a great look, um, I, so, yeah, it, it's a lot, and I'm, I got another one, so there's also this event coverage, this is one of the ones that I found just kind of funny. Uh, so this was another Ishizu Tier Elements deck. This is a feature match in round nine. And you can see just within the first turn, things kind of go to hell in a handbasket. So Funderburg opens with a hand of Mudora, Kelbeck, Bestial Druzworm, and two copies of Agito. He summons Mudora, pitching Agito, uses Agito's effect to send five cards to the graveyard from both players' decks. The result? Funderburg made a chain with Tier Elements Scream as Chain Link 1, Kelbeck Chain Link 2, Agito from his hand at Chain Link 3, Baranovsky's added his own Agito as Chain Link 4, Kelbeck at Chain Link 5, his own Scream at Chain Link 6, Baranovsky searched Tier Elements Celiac with a Scream, both players mill 10 more cards each, Funderburg resolves his special summon, Kelbeck triggers to summon, take another 5 cards off each deck, Scream gets Funderburg back as Celiac, and with so many similar effects, this all felt very mirrored. That's actually going to be a continuing trend here, seeing the almost, um, sarcastic exasperation in some of these uh, event coverage write-ups and live streams, which I'll be showing here in a bit. Then it's time for another chain. Thunderbird activated Tarlements Sheeran, Tarlements Havness, Rhino Heart, and Heartbeat targeting crime. Baranovsky's made his Rhino Heart chain link 5, Sheeran chain link 6, Heartbeat chain link 7, and then Merle is chain link 8, and then Thunderbird banished Mudora chain link 9. And you can see in this last sentence here, um, they say, Let's find it. Yeah. Everything resolved. Cards were shuffled away. And we end up with a whole bunch of nothing. Yep. That's accurate. I think this is very telling of uh, the state of things. And I even picked out two really funny moments from the live stream that I've heard a lot of people talking about. So uh, you can just sort of listen to the commentators get a little bit overwhelmed and lost here. This was that moment in PAC's uh, feature match. So we'll just have a listen. Oh, man. 
I don't know about you, but I have not actually seen a game this complex yet this weekend. Yeah, the, yeah, sure. And all these changes, none of the, no one's fusion summoned yet. No one's a, allowed anyone to do anything else but mill more cards and maybe like add a trap here or there. Because they just keep dumping the, the Midora, then they use the Midora, now they're going to dump the Keldo. But eventually they're going to run out of these effects for the turn. I think Hani might have already used Midora and Keldo on. Yeah, so that's not great. Uh, we can fast forward again to the really funny moment here, where they just both lose track of like where one of the cards even is. Which is kind of um, tragic. He, he still has a Paralino alive, and he's going to use it to destroy the Magnemite. No, so how did the Gross Worm leave the field? Who knows? I'm sure there was <laughs> <laughs> something happened. And I hope it didn't just get lost in the sauce of all the cards, but I'm pretty sure there's something that happened there. So, uh, <laughs> let's. What does this all mean? So, you guys might be thinking that I'm going to say something along the lines of, like, this should all just be banned, this deck is so dominant, it's too good. Uh, my actual thing is, I think that there's going to have to be some pretty harsh limitations or changes to this deck, or maybe the tournament formula. Not because the deck is, like, overpowered and good, although it seems like it is, but more so because of just the complete logistic nightmare on display here. So, yeah, cards are everywhere. Chains are hitting chain link like 10, and then a new chain has to start, and that hits chain link 10. And they have to resolve all this, and it's all in the first turn before things really even start, like, being... I think before attacks even start going off, and, like, monsters are actually even hitting the field, you just have to first resolve all of these things. And also, you've got judges sitting beside these players in these feature matches having to keep up with what has and hasn't been activated. That's especially difficult already with tier elements because they go to the bottom of the deck, so it's sometimes difficult to verify which hard ones for turns have been activated in a given turn and which ones haven't. Plus, you know, you've got the bestials that are able to chain and banish things from the graveyard. And of course, the Ishizu cards that can also chain and banish things and then force more mills. It's really pretty wild, and that's all like having to happen in the span of like these 40 minute rounds where um or i guess 45 minute rounds in this case but these rounds with limited time where you know game one can go 25 or 30 minutes and it's not because both players are slow playing it's just because there's so many things to resolve and you can kind of hear it in the rather sarcastic writing and the event coverage or the commentators just not really being able to fully follow what's going on they're doing their best but i mean it's just really hard to visually process all of it and, like, I really hate to say it, but when pictures like this are kind of going around and it just, this doesn't look good. To newcomers, this looks terrifying, really. I've never seen something so, like, I've just never seen Yu-Gi-Oh! look this messy. I mean, we've had decks like Burning Abyss that mill a lot, decks like Light Swords that mill a lot. It's never been like this. There have never been cards that have both players milling at the same time, then triggering off more mills and triggering off multiple effects. I just don't think that it's ever gotten this crazy. Now, here's the thing. A lot of players are happy about this format because they feel that it is very skill intensive. These Isuzu Terra Elements mirror matches are very interactive, have a lot of decision making and moving parts, and they don't feel like complete blowouts. In fact, the finals match was a great example of this. Both players played really well, each decision felt like it really mattered, and it was a pretty engaging time. A lot of people in the audience and stuff like that seemed like they got really into the matches whenever like a strong like, momentum swing happened and things like that. And that's great. I don't want to put a damper on the fun. I think that for competitive players, this seems like a great format. It seems like it really rewards people who are prepared and can sort of function under that pressure. But the thing is, that's good and well, but this is not okay. Logistically, it's not okay. It's not okay for the time procedures. It's not okay for anybody from the outside looking in. This picture here, to me, represents in its truest form, the epitome of what a lot of outsiders think of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! today. People like to make jokes that, you know, modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is just so crazy and you just slap your whole, you know, every monster in your deck down in the, on the field in, like, one move. And, like, it's up to now kind of been a tongue-in-cheek thing. You could always say, oh, just that's an like angry Yu-Gi boomer is just sort of saying their thing. They don't know what's going on. This is, like, actually that. And that is terrible optics, I think, on Konami's end. I don't think that they want their game to look this wild. I don't think that they want it to be portrayed this way, where, you know, players are barely able to keep up with effects, and there's stress on the judges' faces, on the players' faces, at many points in these streams. It's not a, you know, it's not anyone's fault here either. Like, there's not, like, a slow-playing thing going on, or, you know, players trying to, like, cheat each other. It's just there's so much to keep up with, so many effects just that are just going off at one time, and fields that look like this... That's not good. So, um, yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. I don't think that it's a really great look. I think that for the average person who's looking to get into Yu-Gi-Oh, if they see this, this is just, it's, it's terrifying. It's definitely going to scare people away. 
Um, now could be a great time, maybe for Konami, if they don't want to hit these cards because they're so new. Terra Elements are new, Shizu's new, Bestial's new. They don't want to hit all of it. Then I guess Konami better start pushing Time Wizard and Heart of the Underdog and hope that players just latch onto that because I don't really think it's very good. Um, you know, if you're a very competitive player and you find joy in this, no harm done, right? Like these these mirror matches seem fun. I just don't think that Konami wants this. When Yu-Gi-Oh already has that sort of ongoing reputation of being way too complicated to learn these days, and then you finally see this, and it's like, yeah, this is definitely like it, this is overboard. It's a logistic nightmare for tournaments, and so things got to give. What's it going to be? I would love to hear in the comments. I have not actually kept up with the metagame itself, so I don't know, you know, what the best cards to hit for these things are. I just know that this probably can't exist for much longer so uh yeah you can call me you know like a scrub you can call me a yugi boomer you can say that i don't appreciate you know good high level Yu-Gi-Oh, but that really has nothing to do with my take that it just is not great optics so uh yeah let me know down in the comments what you guys think if you watched the event um or if you just sort of saw the kind of outside coverage of it how do you feel about all of it? Do you feel like this is something that Konami needs to change? Maybe they just need to change the time rules or something like that instead. I don't really know, but I'd love to hear it. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one where uh, maybe we'll be covering whatever happens to the next YCS that's like happening this weekend. Who knows? All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Best turn.